here is Jake. He's having his acupuncture treatment and getting bribed by Dr. Eva. <laughs> He's looking very handsome. There's all these needles in his back there. He does like those kangaroo treats. I'm pleased to announce that I am now a Fear Free Certified Practitioner. What, may you ask, is a Fear Free Certified Practitioner? Well, we are practitioners that look out for your pet's physical health as well as their emotional well-being. We have completed nine hours of online continuing education and SAC tests at the end of that. We are better equipped to handle fearful, anxious and stressed out pets. The Fear Free Initiative's mission is to prevent and alleviate fear, anxiety and stress in pets by inspiring and educating the people who care for them. Ensuring that you, your fur baby and my fur babies have good relaxed veterinary visits is very important to me. My journey to reduce the fear, anxiety and stress of my patients kicked up a notch with the addition of Charlie and Elmo into my family. Charlie came first and boy did he pack a lot of baggage into his tiny 8 kilogram body. He is the poster child for hyperarousal and unfortunately does an excellent job at demonstrating many of these behaviours including hyperactivity, destruction, panting, facial grimace, inability to concentrate, snatching treats, mouthing, his lipstick showing, constant jumping and mouthing, um, and excessive friendliness. Fortunately, the more work we do with Charlie and the better he is stabilised on his behavioural medi medications, the less frequently we are seeing these behaviours. They have not been eliminated entirely, but we have made considerable headway into helping him live a happier life. I think it's very hard for you to understand just how challenging and demanding it can be living with a dog who has special needs until you have lived with one yourself. The list of things that Charlie has destroyed, the countless changes we have needed to make to our routine and our house, the money we have spent on medications, blood tests, behaviourists, dog trainers and dog walkers, and the huge amount of time that we have invested in his ongoing happiness cannot be quantified. I have shed tears, been frustrated, disheartened, proud, excited and surprised by nearly everything that Charlie has taught me. He was my first big step into taking more care for the emotional well-being of my patients. As time went on, it became obvious that Charlie would benefit from having a doggy brother or sister. It was not a decision we made lightly, although we were very much of the opinion, if we could handle Charlie, we could handle anything. Um, Charlie gave us the confidence to know that whilst it was hard, it was very rewarding to love a dog like him. For Charlie, he thrived when we were babysitting other dogs and his hyper-arousal behaviours behavior were definitely reduced. So, along came Elmo. He was meant to come to us. The stars aligned, Elmo needed a home who would understand his gentle and anxious ways, and we needed another young dog to join our family. There's something about being a vet that means you seem to attract fur kids with special needs. Elmo was a failed therapy dog. He had been in training for 15 months to become a therapy and assistance dog for a family with a disabled child. Unfortunately, Elmo's constitution and his anxiety around new people and unfamiliar situations meant that that would have not been a good fit for him. He needed a family that would give him time, space and the support he needed to thrive in his own environment. Elmo, unlike Charlie, displayed his anxiety through avoidance, which is a flight response. Observing his very high level of fear around new people was very confronting for me. He became my next big motivating step into finding better ways to reduce his and my patients fear, anxiety and stress when in new and scary situations. Not all signs of fear, anxiety and stress are as obvious as Elmo's. Many pet pets give only subtle signs of stress, which are hard for the untrained eye to pick up on. Subtle signs of fear, anxiety and stress include lip licking, being a Velcro dog where they just stick to you, <laughs> scratching, um, lifting up one paw, yawning, mounting, shaking off, hypervigilance, constant licking of themselves or other things or people, um, and sniffing. When you look at their face alone, there are lots of signs, including signs of stress that is, including whale eye, um, grinning, looking away from you, um, what we call clown mouth, um, having their brow furrowed, uh, their ears might be alert, 
back or flattened or even sticking out to the side. They may do cheek puffing or teeth chattering and sometimes they're squinting or blinking at you. The more I read about the Fear Free philosophies, the more I wanted to know. I have completed my certification and I'm busily testing out my newly acquired knowledge. I was so pleased that instinctively I was already uh, utilising many aspects of Fear Free practice. As time goes on, I hope to be able to show you more of what it means to be a Fear Free Certified Practitioner um, and I will be sharing with you tips and tricks that will help your pets have a calm and happy veterinary visit. The Fear Free Visit starts at home with you and I will be sharing my recommendations for the best ways to transport your pet to the vet in the coming weeks. To finish up, I'd like to leave you with Simba, who is enjoying his Fear Free um, acupuncture visit with the help of a tuna squeezy cat treat. For more information about Fear Free Pets, um, or to find a Fear Free Practitioner near you, visit www.fearfreepets.com Good boy, Elmo.